Hi everyone, Kelvin from London here. I've spent my whole life messing around with hi-fi, buying equipment, selling equipment, and now I'm doing this YouTube channel. I'm, I'm just sharing all the things I know about hi-fi and reviewing things, obviously. But, you know, sometimes there, there are lots of little things that will help you understand why things sound good or bad or this way. In this case, why this has got a gorgeous mid-range, which is because that's a paper cone and it's a small box, uh, paper cone being light. So, you know, I'm just trying to share all my information with you. So, got these things here. They're called a Royd uh, Sintra, yes. Um, this company, Royd, it's a British company, busy, uh, was active between the early 80s to the year 2000. That's my information. And they made, you know, quite a few models, 10, 12, something like this. Made a lot of small ones and also made a, a sort of quite a popular thing called a, a Royd Minstrel. Um, you know, I'm actually suddenly very interested in all the other speakers for this company because I'm really liking these speakers. Um, but anyway, you know, they're probably, they're not a worldwide name and they are pretty much giving you a, a, a British-ish type sound, yeah? Um, these have got a port at the back. Uh, they're very heavy. Second you pick them up, you're, 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 I think it's 13 kilograms. Surprisingly heavy. Must be a big magnet in there. And a beautiful, nice tweeter. And, you know, paper cone. This is what is giving it the the, uh, the detailing in the mid frequencies. And there's a port at the back, by the way. Price wise, it's hard to say because there's not tons of these around, but it wouldn't surprise me if people are, people are trying to sell these for three or 400 pounds. And I can, I can see why, yeah, I can see why. Some of the other Royd stuff, doesn't seem to go for that much. There's not that much of it about, but um, some of them go for like 150 pounds, even the the minstrel, which are quite tall. I don't know, I'm just uh, personally getting, I'd be very interested to hear if you guys have got any, or I'd like to hear myself. So, because they just immediately you play these, you know, there's, a, it's, there's some love gone into it. Yeah, someone just, you know, there's some, uh, some well worked, so some a good brain at work to make you know designing these speakers because little speakers like this often have something quite seriously lacking or I don't know they have problems and anyway these really hit the mark. I'll give you all about the sound. I'll do it right now. Um, I'm just going to read you a load of uh, comments from my notes. Delightful light responsive mid-range and top end well balanced the mid and the top end could easily be from a, a really expensive speaker you you could imagine you could think oh if i got that mid and top end and then i had some real good bass that would be like a three four thousand pound speaker you know because the mid and the top are just super super lovely it's airy this is the thing there's more space in this mid-range almost than that I kind of feel like there should be it's almost it's almost a space creator but not it's not messing up imagery or making sounds go wrong you know it's just got a lot of mid-range I guess you'd say things like guitars female vocals, plucked guitars, you know, people's you know, finger picking guitars, just great, really, really good. Now, bass, well, so, you know, there has to be a downside, yeah? You know, it's not surprising these aren't giving you oodles of tight, deep bass, but they're giving you, they're filling the sound out, yeah? It's not that you're missing out on, it's not, you're not listening and going, this is bass light. You're not thinking that because the bass is there. It's not super defined. 
it hasn't got great welly. Uh, but it's not a speaker where you're feeling it's gone. It feels like the full picture, you know, the full picture, but the base area is, say, not so well defined. But it is there. It is there. So it, that's nice, you know, because if I was feeling like that, I was totally base light. This would, you know, that would be wrong. That would be too wrong. You don't feel like anything's wrong with these speakers. Let me just say something I've just forgot to mention. I, this, there's a lot of screws here, yeah? I got my screwdriver out and they were all really loose, yeah? So I tighten them all up. My God, is that a win-win? If you have old vintage speakers, really try and tighten these up don't tighten the life out of it but i tighten all these up just generally you know but, but they were so loose and it was transformative you know they weren't that good you tight you got to have those reasonably tight and now you sharpen up the image the base gets tighter it's just a terrible thing to have loose drivers particularly the base driver it's just a terrible thing but do care, be careful, don't go at it like the Hulk, yeah, because that you can strip the thread. So take care, take care. Okay, what else with this thing? Now, partnering this with equipment. For once, I, I kind of feel like I don't, I mean, I did have this on, I've had it on with various amps, but uh, I did think that these are really, because they're so detailed, they do so much fine detailing really well. And you will hear all that fine detailing that I want it actually partnered with something that's really quite precise. And that may be that it's not a vintage amp, yeah? So I would like say, what I would probably do is probably use that uh, Lin Wakanda preamp. And maybe I could use a, a vintage power amp, but you could use something I mean, you can use high-end gear. That's the point I'm making. You could use really high-end detail gear, and these would resolve the detail. Yeah, they'll give it. You know, it would be worth having. There's a lot of speakers that it's not worth doing, but these are kind of. It's like they're about detail. They're about detail, imaging, imaging, and you know, just they do this fine detail so beautifully. Um. What else do we have here? Yeah, you can listen to these speakers all day. They're one of those type of speakers, yeah. Ultimately, it's incredibly enjoyable. Just really enjoyable. Uh, it's probably mid-range orientated, generally speaking, you'd say that. But it's kind of not annoying and it doesn't really feel wrong. You don't, you're not sitting there going, oh, where's the bass? A um, couple of songs, Alison Krauss, Gravity, female vocals, guitars, absolutely great. Take It Easy, The Eagles, vocals great, but I'm not getting the pumping bass, yeah? You're not going to get the grippy pumping bass notes out of little speakers like this. But you'll get so much else, you know, personally, it wouldn't bother me at all. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, and drums, really nice on drums, tom toms, snares, authentic sounding, and you know, the whole thing, do, 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 the whole note resolved in a space. Not a huge sound, but not what some speakers do, is some speakers just can't seem to do drums good, particularly some modern speakers. And again, it's probably this paper cone, you know, because it, it's quick and light. So it does drums lovely. Uh, so yeah, I really like these speakers. They're not mine, uh, but I'd like them a lot, you know, and I'd pay, well, I'm a tight wad, as they call it in England. I don't like spending money, but I'd probably pay 250, 300 maybe, but you know, I, I always look at, I always want a bargain, me. 
Um, okay, that's about it. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, lots of other videos on my channel. Okay, thanks. Bye for now.